Welcome to React Advanced. My name is Sergey, and today I would like to talk about using Recoil in React and React Native. Uh, a little bit about me. I have been working as a web developer more than 10 years now. I work with different uh, technologies in different industries. I work with uh, backend and frontend technologies, but uh, several later years I work with React and I really like it. I'm really a fan of JavaScript and different JavaScript frameworks, but as I said, I like React the most. And what is the plan for today's talk? Uh, I would like to start from sharing some moments about state management problem in React and popular solutions for state management. Uh, then I would like to share just basic or basics of React uh, of Recoil and how it works. Uh, then I would like to share a little bit uh, about ADHD program and why we need Recoil there. And uh, also I would like to talk a little bit about testing uh, Recoil atoms and selectors. So about state management problem in React. Uh, in all our applications we have state and we all know that we usually have some problems managing it. So why we have those problems? I think that we have some problems because we have different types of state, we have a lot of state libraries and approaches and we also have different platforms like React and React Native. So this makes the problem a little bit complex. At first I would like to talk about types of state, so we are on the same page. Why I would like to talk about this? Because uh, depending on the type of state that we are dealing with right now, uh, we can select a better tool that we need right now for this type of state. So the simplest uh, state is a components local state. And uh, I think that uh, we all know how to manage this. Yeah? Today we can manage local state in uh, class-based components and also in functional components thanks to hooks. Yeah? So uh, the next type of state is components shared state. Uh, when we have some data that we need to use in different components, then we usually select a parent and we move or lift up a shared state to this component and then we pass the data via props. Also, we can have an app's global state. Global state is something or some data uh, that we have on a global level for our application and we, that we use in different components on different levels in our application. Part of this state can be a UI state. UI state is a state that we use for storing data that describes what and how we would like to display. For example, maybe uh, what theme we use, yeah, uh, what colors, what, what fonts, and what sizes of these fonts. Okay, and another part is a cache. Uh, cache it's quite important, but when we need the cache, most of our applications uh, they do API calls. Uh, and when we retrieve some data, usually we want to cache it uh, to improve user experience. When we navigate between tabs or when we navigate between uh, different pages of our applications, very often we can cache the data and don't, don't fetch it again and again. And by the way, I put Redux and GraphQL here as some possible solutions, because Redux and GraphQL, they're, quite, uh, they're really good for caching. And by the way, as far as I know, here in React Advanced, we also will have a talk about GraphQL cache, and I'm sure it will be an awesome one. 
uh, what about Redux? Yeah, and uh, I would like to mention that a lot of times when new approach for state management uh, appears, uh, then a lot of people they say, so okay, so this time Redux will die. The same was when Context API was introduced, but Redux is quite alive and friendly speaking, uh, I really like Redux and uh, I'm checking how it's, it evolves and I've been uh, preparing uh, a talk about uh, Redux and how it evolves, uh, Redux toolkits and, uh, and all of that. But what about Recoil? Can it be a replacement for Redux? And uh, React team, they say yes. So they think that uh, Recoil can replace Redux totally. And as far as I know, even creator of Redux, Dan Abramo, you know, yeah. So he usually says that he doesn't like Redux, but I do. <laughs> but I also like Recoil. So what about Recoil? Recoil is a state management library for React. So it's another state management library. But also it's a set of utilities for state management. So Recoil provides us a bunch of useful hooks in different utility functions. Uh, please note that Recoil is an experimental set of tools of tools. So we, it wasn't uh, officially released yet, but as far as I know, it's already used in production, uh, I think very often. Uh, yeah, so what are the advantages of Recoil? Uh, they say that it's minimal and reactish. So uh, it works uh, very well with React and it's minimal, but don't think that it's uh, the library is small. The library comparing even with Redux, the library itself is quite big. Yeah, but minimal means that uh, we need just a little bit amount of code to start to work with Recoil. It has an easy learning curve. curve. So we, we can just, uh, we can start just from atoms and selectors. And we uh, and the tool. It's so easy. Also, it's both rate free API. Uh, when people say they don't like Redux, they usually say that you need to to write a lot of code to support Redux uh, state. Yeah. And also, uh, Recoil uh, is distributed and incremental state definition. So advantage of uh, Recoil is that uh, we can uh, write um, our state management system uh, as a distributed one. So atoms can be distributed. It usually helps uh, with code splitting, for example. And also Recoil supports React Suspense. I think it's quite famous feature that React team is developing for, for se uh, several years. So what is Recoil? Uh, I created this simple formula. So Recoil is atoms plus selectors plus hooks plus utilities. What are uh, the atoms? Atoms contain the source of truth for our application state. Uh, comparing with Redux, yeah, it's like slices of our state. And what are the selectors? Selectors, they represent a piece of derived state. Uh, those who used, uh, who used to use Redux in your applications, I think you already used Redux and library like reselect. So this is quite similar feature. What about ADHD? ADHD it's a non-profit uh, organization and uh, project. 
it was started by students. They actually they had ADHD. They have ADHD, and they decided that students that have ADHD they need some help to um, obtain uh, education in more proper way. So they decided to do something with this, and companies uh, like Amazon. Uh, actually Amazon Web Services, they decided to help students with this. So a group of volunteers all over the world, uh, all together with uh, professional uh, managers and developers from AWS, we all help uh, a DHD America program to develop a DHD My Way application that should help uh, children to obtain uh, education in more proper way and to resolve issues that they have. Uh, in ADHD My Way, we develop React and React Native, so mobile application. And uh, I asked to show just a few slides uh, from the application itself. And uh, by the way, here we can see a dashboard that uh, parents or teachers will be will use. And also we develop mobile application and uh, mobile application will be used mostly by children's children. Sorry. Uh, and uh, young generation likes mobile applications. <laughs> yeah, so we decided to implement exactly mobile application. And interesting moment that uh, design initial design was created on hackathons by students as well. So in our React application, we started to use Recoil. And here, how we can use Recoil in our login view state. So we can see that uh, login view state is just a simple atom. Atom uh, should use the key uh, and key should be unique one, yeah. And another one uh, property is a default property where we have initial login state. It can be any object uh, of the of a state slice, yeah, that you create for your application. So here we can see some fields like username, password, username error, and all of that. Then. Uh, we can use this state by leveraging uh, recoil's hook use recoil value. We use use recoil value when we need just read the state and we don't want to change it. When we want to change the recoil state, then we use use uh, recoil state. It's quite similar like React use state hook. By the way, to use uh, recoil, recoil atoms and hooks, you need to wrap your application into recoil root. Recoil root uh, will provide all required context for all our components. And so our components will be able to connect and subscribe uh, to the store updates. By the way, here, when we have, uh, when we use use recoil value hook, we not only read the value from the state, but we also subscribe to subscribe to the state changes. And when uh, this state, when it's updated, then uh, all components that that were subscribed to updates, they also will be updated. It's cool. What about event uh, observing events? Yeah, here you can see that we added recoil observer uh, component, and actually it's our. Uh, experiment experiment about using uh, observer pattern to notify uh, all 
observers that some action was happened. So it's quite simple. We create a basic subject where we uh, attach all observers and we use notify method in the uh, in this uh, basic subject. And when in we notify uh, any observer that some action is happened, but only if observer has the same topic. Yeah, what is the topic? Uh, the topic uh, is just a simple string. You can see it here. And it's very similar like uh, Re Redux uh, action types. Selectors. Uh, of course, one of the great things of uh, Recoil is selectors. So we don't need uh, additional third party library. We can use uh, selectors out of the box. And as I said earlier, selectors are. Uh, they represent the derived state. So we can just read state or we can read and modify some data so we can filter something. Also, a great thing here is that we uh, the selectors, they can be uh, synchronous and asynchronous. And it's a really nice thing. And it also plays very well with React Suspense. Uh, what about React Native app? So here you can see our login view state for React Native and it's totally the same that we use in React application. This allows us to reuse all that uh, all state configuration for login, registration, for good password features and all of that. And then we can use it easily in our navigation, for example. You can see that we also use, use recoil value hook to get the data and to subscribe yeah, to the state updates. Uh, the same thing, sure thing that we need to use recoil root here as well. Okay, uh, before we move on to testing recoil, I would like to share a little bit about reusing uh, state management uh, in this uh, situation, state management with recoil in React and uh, React Native. I had quite good experience uh, moving shared state features uh, into a, a separate library, but it was with uh, Redux. And now we have an idea to split the same, I mean, to extract the state management uh, that we have in React and React Native applications into a separate library. And we already started to work on this. So we create a library that will contain all recoil atoms and uh, also selectors, everything that we need for login, authorization stuff, and all of, all of that. Yeah. So at least we extract a piece of state about those features that I mentioned, but we also continue to look what we can reuse as well. Uh, about testing. Uh, testing recoil is uh, quite uh, easy thing. So first of all, please remember to use recoil root in your tests because of course you need to wrap your component or application yeah, with recoil root um, because without this you will have an error. And uh, first of all, if you need to test uh, some React component, so you test recoil um, atom, I mean recoil state uh, within the React component context. Then you can use recoil observer pattern. Pattern. It's not a part of uh, recoil utilities. You can create 
such similar simple recoil observer and then you can use it like this and you just change uh, the state and then you can observe what that uh, state was changed and what was changed and all of that and sometimes you need to test your uh, selectors outside of react uh, components contact context so you can use snapshot unstable uh, it wasn't available uh, in the first versions of recoil but now it's available and you can generate uh, snapshots and then you can compare old uh, old state with new state uh, so a small summary uh, recoil is a really nice tool but it's still ex experimental Recoil can be used in React and React Native. Earlier, Redux was a very famous uh, tool for React Native applications. But today, I think we already have really good alternative. Uh, Recoil is very easy to test uh, within React context and outside. And actually, I really like this tool and it's possible that in a few years, it really can replace Redux. What do you think about this? I have shared a few links here, so you can check Recoil documentation, it's really nice. And authors of the library, they also uh, created some introduction videos about Recoil. And uh, in the Recoil.js or resources, you can find a link to quite interesting uh, resource about uh, Recoil. So uh, there is there was a course created about it and it's free. Also, I'm sharing a link to a DHD America program and a link to my GitHub where I plan to add the simplified code uh, it will be the same uh, functionality that we use in React and React Native in a DHD, but of course it will be simplified and all data that is related to our project uh, will be removed because we don't provide our code for public, at least yet. And thank you.